Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm here in Mint Hill Memorial Park. And I came here. I was preaching about Moses and the story of Moses here in this park. It's kind of empty. But there were a few people. And I have that man in the green shirt. He said he's calling the cops on me because I'm preaching the word of God. That I'm disturbing the people. Let's turn it around on him. This man right here. He said he's calling 911 because I was preaching Jesus Christ and that I'm disturbing the people in the park. When I came to this park, it was empty. When I got here, a whole bunch of people started coming in. So he's like, oh, you need to leave. You need to get out of here. This is exactly what the man told me. Well, I'm waiting here. He called the cops. He says he's the park ranger, the, the man that guards the park from, from scum like me. So I told him, I'm like, so there's people all over this park. I've had people do so many horrible things to me. No one's ever called the cops. I'm preaching the word of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to wait here. I was like, oh, you called the cops. That's fantastic. I'm willing to stay here. I'm like, it's about time you call the cops. And I want to see them take me and handcuff me for preaching the word of salvation. This man right here. He's there telling people that I'm bothering them because I'm preaching the word of God. There with his arms crossed, acting like he just did such a righteous job. It's amazing that this country, literally everything that they're doing, is going to curse this country. And they think because of what they're doing, you know, they're doing such awesome things. Here comes the police. <laughs> And he's there telling his, his friends over here that I'm hurting and I'm harassing the people. It's just sick what's going on. It's very sad. Is very sad. Right here. The five foot tall Latina is being picked on. He kicked me out. Of, he's like, I have to get out of the park. He told me that I have to leave because I'm disturbing the people in the park. Glory be to God. And you got like another guy here now. Look at this. This is one of the lowest moments of this country. One of the lowest moments where you're preaching the gospel of salvation. And like this is the thrill of the day. No, you cannot preach eternal salvation and hope and faith because you're disturbing the people. Let them pull up. And then he's telling me, like, he's kicking me out as if I've done some sort of federal offense.
this is what like white America complains about and I have nothing against white people my friends I'm Hispanic but they're they're ruckus what they complain about ruckus is a woman preaching Jesus Christ yet I hear fire trucks and police cars going up and down my street and there's no crimes happening they created like disturbing the peace and it's it's just a sad time for this country it's like this mind control is going on that you speak hope you speak faith you speak salvation Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. So we got a call. Um, some people are saying that you're causing a disturbance. No, not nobody went to complain to the man. That man in the green shirt, okay, he's some sort of ranger. But I was speaking. This is a public park. Yeah. And there's nobody here working here. When I caught here, there's nobody here. Like, I mean, there was like nobody here. A few people were here. Okay. So I'm preaching the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And this man, he must have pulled up like maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago. I've been here for more than an hour. And the guy in the green shirt, he pulls up here. Someone's dropped him off. So he heard me preaching. And I was actually almost done. Okay. But I mean, I was preaching hope, faith, salvation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And this is, it's a joke to this man. He's like, you need to get out. No, you can't. You have to get out. You can't stay here. No. That <laughs> I mean, look at the message. What is wrong with the message? Nothing. You have free speech to whatever message you want to deliver. He told me you were soliciting. Soliciting is. Your I told to him I'm not him. soliciting Jesus Christ. I don't make money from preaching the word, and I'm not crying because I'm hurt. I'm crying because this country. It can't, it think, look at what they're doing. He's calling the cops because I'm preaching Jesus. It's a joke. He's laughing. No, he didn't say. He's like, you need to get out of here with that. And you need to leave. That's what he said. And all of these people are just, it's just like, it's sick. It's sick because there's so many things happening in parks. And it's just, it doesn't make any sense what these people consider good and what they consider bad. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. And he's just like, oh, well, there's rules. Well, there's no, but first of all, you weren't here. And if I was really disturbing somebody, I think they would have called the cops an hour ago. So I just feel like it's call, he's causing a show because he wants to. That's it. And anyway, I'm done. So I'm going to go home anyway, not because he kicked me out. This is a public park. It is. And I'm not here. I don't, I'm not having a church service. So I'm not going to come and ask to sit on a bench. When I was preaching, there was probably one or two people there. If people came and they knew I was doing that, why would you come? So when you want to explain things to people and they don't want to listen, then they're not going to listen. So I don't really think I did anything wrong. And if this is wrong, then there's something wrong with how people see. If you're speaking hope, you're speaking faith, you're speaking love, you're speaking eternal salvation, something that's positive for kids, just letting people know, let your kids know about God, let them know about if they have to go through something, it's positive. I'm not coming here selling drugs. I'm not here selling Jesus. I'm not here trying to ask for offerings. And I told them I'm not soliciting. I'm not giving out Bible tracts. I'm not telling people to come to a church. There's people I see all the time playing music in parks. They're doing things all the time. And I don't call the cops on these people. And it's, it's a shame because these are people like he looks like he has a good head on his shoulders. But he's kissing a dog right now. So at the end of the day, I just I don't understand why people would do that. Kick God something that has to do for everybody's good make it seem like it's bad mm -hmm. so at the end of the day I'm going home not because he kicked me out not because I'm gonna ever say if I did something wrong I told him I don't care I can take me to a penitentiary take me to jail 
Because if that's his excuse that I'm disturbing people because of Jesus. And there's so many things going on in different parks from what I see on the news. This is exactly what you need to tell people before they go into parks. Because there are a lot of people doing bad things. And you can just stop somebody from doing something wrong by giving them a conscience of what they're doing wrong. And instead of that, he's just like, you don't listen. I'm like, what do you mean I don't listen? You know, it's just... I'm still going to come to this park. And this guy's acting like he's kicking me out, like he's going to put some sort of picture saying that I can't come into the park. You're allowed to be here. If you ever felt like this happens again, or if that man was bothering you to a point where you felt like you couldn't continue what you were doing, you're allowed to call us just as much as he can. I'm, 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 this is the point. Is like I'm not. I've been through so many things. I have. I don't think I've ever called the cops. Not because I don't believe in cops. Not because I'm. I'm saying anything terrible. If I ever said anything that's offended people through my message that I had, it's not because I'm trying to incriminate everybody. And I always make this clear in any message that I say. There's good and bad people in everything, just like there is in religion, just like there is in the Christian faith that I walk. I, I don't disclude anyone, but I'm not one of those people. I'm trying to make people understand that. But I wasn't here. I don't really feel like I was doing anything wrong. And if I was, I'm not going to apologize for preaching the word. I'm not. Because I could be doing 10 million different other things that are not good, but I'm choosing to do this. And it seems to be the most worst thing I've done. Well, to me, um, from what you're telling me, he told me that you were soliciting. That's the one thing. I'm not soliciting. That you're not allowed to do. But and from uh, what you're telling me, you, you're not. If our laws, our, our Mint Hill Town Ordinance says you can't sell anything. You can't. That's what soliciting is. You can't ask anybody to give you money. You can't. <laughs> go door to door trying to do any of that and that's what soliciting is and if you're telling me you're out here just trying to spread your message and get people to hear what you have to say there's nothing wrong about that and I'm not I wasn't soliciting I'm not telling them, oh come to my church I don't even have a church to go to so I'm here doing this because it's the right thing to do mm -hmm. and, and there's nothing that's stopping you I'm not telling you you have to leave if you're choosing, if you want to continue to do what you do in a peaceful manner, you're allowed to continue doing what you choose to do. Well, I'm done anyway, so I'm going home. Okay. But I'm not leaving because of this gentleman. This is, I'm still going to call him a gentleman because I, I believe sometimes people are confused with what they think is right and wrong. He just may be one of those individuals. But thank you so much, and I really appreciate your time. But I wasn't soliciting. I really I was not selling Jesus Christ. I was not asking people for and money. I, I believe you were not selling. Um, or trying to make anybody come to a church. I'm going to let him know the same thing. That if you do choose to come back out here, you are allowed. So he has an understanding of that. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I'm going home now anyway. Okay. okay. Um, I made contact with you, and typically when we make contact, we just get information. Uh -huh. Right get your information just to say I made contact with you and then if officers do follow up they can see we've had contact with you as far as like my name yeah we get name and number but it, is that like are you like reporting me to something or something uh this is not like a police report it's just a miscellaneous incident we uh -huh. log it we make a log uh-huh we make yeah. a log that says hey I made contact with this person everything mm -hmm. was okay this is her name and number uh-huh all right well that's fine Okay. It's Yvonne Chamba. Is it? Do you have your driver's license on you? I can just get your driver's license number, so that way I can pull it up and then. But is that like because? Are, do you really have to? Oh, okay, no. Because if anything, this guy was the rude guy. No, no, no. This is just for me to document that. Yes, I made contact with her, the person that they called about. Everything is ten four, or everything is good, and she's on her way. She can stay if she wants, but she's choosing to leave. Yeah, so I just, what I'm doing is getting your driver's license and your phone number, and I'm uh -huh. just going to document that this is who it is and who I made contact and talk, uh, spoke with. Mm -hmm. Is your driver's license up to date? Yes. Okay, so this is your current address? Uh-huh. Yes. And what's your current phone number? Oh, 704-963-5858. Okay. 
Five eight. Six five. Six five. Yeah, so if anytime you choose to come back, if you want to let us know, you don't have to. But if for your safety you feel like you don't feel safe, you can let us know. And we can definitely be aware that you're here. But you're more than welcome to come back and your First Amendment allows you to say whatever you have to say to the public. No, I know. And, I, and I, I'm not going to stop, you know. And if it becomes that, like, I mean, it's just ridiculous the fact that you preach Jesus Christ. And yet, not everyone's on the same page or feels the same way, and it has to turn into hostility. But, but it doesn't. It wasn't. You know, it's just a person who, who gets to feel happy because it's like it's it's just. I don't really think it's not that he believes in God. I just think he thinks he's doing the right thing. He well, thinks he's look. doing it for the right reasons. But in reality, this country is in need of I'm God. Put up some solicitation misunderstandings with him um, and let him know that you are allowed to be here and okay. no, whatever okay. you're doing. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, All right. You Have a good day. Safe. Oh, you be safe, okay? yes. This is a gang stalker, my friends. She said she was going to tell him that I'm not soliciting because he says that I'm soliciting the word and that I'm disturbing the people. This is the country of the United States, my friends. It's a beautiful thing. I've been waiting for these people to call the police on me. And this is very sad. Every single community where it's been a little bit more upper class, just like in Best Buy, they called the cops on me when I was trying to pre when I was playing my radio in my car. This guy called the cops on me because he said that I'm disturbing the people with the word that I was preaching the hope, the faith, the salvation of Jesus Christ. And I was talking about the story of Moses. And he said that I, I was soliciting. Soliciting means that you're trying to sell something in the park. And I told him I'm not selling nothing in the park. So this man in the green shirt, he told me that I need to get out, that I need to leave. And that what I'm doing is not acceptable here in the park. That's what he told me. I was here for more than an hour. This man came like maybe 15 minutes ago. The man in, this man, the white man in the red shirt, the green shirt. This is another gang stalker, an organized harasser. They come here. And they think they're giving their signals, chewing their bubble gum and rubbing their noses in their eyes because they don't want me to preach the word of God. They want to control what I do. They want to control what I say. They want to control everything. And this is the socialistic, communistic behavior of the country. When I came, there was almost nobody here. So I was preaching to a few people. And then the park started getting full. More and more and more people started coming. And if somebody, if one of the people that were here, I was here for over an hour. I was here for over an hour and not one person called the cops. This man came here like 15 minutes ago. And he's like, I'm going to call the cops if I don't leave. Because he started telling me that I needed to get out, that I was soliciting. And I'm like, I'm not soliciting. I'm not selling. And I'm not promoting a church. I came here just like everybody else. Shame on you. I don't know why this woman came here.
So all these people started showing up and now it's a problem. If the people, I was here for an hour. This is, the, 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 this is what I'm trying to say. If I was here for over an hour and nobody called the cops saying, oh, she's bothering us. This man came 15 minutes ago and called the cops on me because I was talking about Jesus Christ telling people and I wasn't even taught I wasn't even sitting there talking about like the Ten Commandments I was telling people about the hope the faith and the salvation of Jesus Christ I was telling about that this country is in need of Jesus I wasn't even talking about oh you know the sin and, and adultery and and the, I wasn't going all crazy like you know really getting into what sin is I was really just trying to tell people Tell your children about Jesus because it's the most important thing. If you ever go through a crisis or through some sort of problem that you can't resolve, Jesus will give you the faith and the strength to go through it. And this man was basically telling me that I can't ever come here and do that in a public park. This is a public park, my friends. Like you'd think that there was some sort of disaster that happened. And no, my friends, it's just like crazy. Oh my God, here she comes, the mediator. Yes. So he informed me that uh, you were spreading your message with a megaphone. Is that correct? Yeah, I have a megaphone. Okay, so our town does have a noise ordinance, decibel uh -huh. violation. Mm -hmm. So I'm not banning you from spreading a message how you choose, but mm -hmm. we do have a level of decibels where we can't have it heightened to that mm -hmm. point. Okay. 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 <laughs> so if you want to continue to be out here and mm -hmm. do what you were doing, mm -hmm. the megaphone can't be a thing. Okay, no, that's no problem. I have my voice. No, I still have my voice, and my voice yeah, is pretty yeah, loud. that's fine, and that's what I was explaining to him. Mm -hmm. um, the oh, megaphone is just... It's a quiet park, and our noise ordinance doesn't allow that level heightened unless you get a permit and it allows you to have like we have uh concerts and stuff mm -hmm. and that's pre-approved but our noise ordinance doesn't allow things as such mm -hmm. okay okay no problem okay okay thank you so much yes, ah <sighs> that was resolved so that's no problem with me because my megaphone is my voice my voice I, I have a really quiet spoken voice, but when I shout, when I start speaking the word of the Lord, when you're outside, why would you mumble? Oh, this was so awesome. Hallelujah, <laughs> praise God. Mission completed, everybody. Mission completed. I had an awesome woman cop. And today, yay, Mint Hill Police Department, we love you. God bless you all. Ooh, we got to take my sign off from the back. Is she coming back my license? Mission complete, my brothers and sisters. Glory be to God. Glory be to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Does she have my thingy? Do you have my thingamajig? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We must continue to move forward. We must continue to preach the word of God. Continue to declare the hope, the faith, the salvation, the redemption, and the restoration of Jesus Christ. Regardless, my friends, because this spiritual entity called Satan is not having any limitations to his harassment, to everything that is going on in this country. The least that we could do to honor God, whether it's speaking it, whether it's preaching it, whether it's evangelism, 
my friends, I don't recommend you doing everything that I do. But this is only one way to spread the word of God. Because you have to let people know the urgency of salvation. This is real, my friends. In 2019, this is the second time in this year that somebody has called the cops on me. Last time it was because I was playing my radio in my car. And they called at Best Buy, all right? This is the second time. And I really, at this point, I don't, like, you know, if somebody wants to arrest me, for doing this, I have no problem because you know what? At the end of the day, I wasn't selling drugs. I wasn't soliciting. I was not selling myself. I was not selling Jesus Christ. I was not asking for money. I was not harassing people. I was here for over one hour and nobody called the cops on me. This man gets here about 15 minutes before I'm finishing up and then he calls the cops on me. That man in the green shirt, the white guy in the green shirt. And it goes to show you that people are ready to get rid of anybody who carries the message of the Lord. Anybody who carries the message of the Lord, this is what they want to do to you. They want to scare you to the point where you don't do where you don't do this. And this is exactly what God wants his sons and daughters to do. Don't be afraid. Because at the end of the day, if you are going to be accused of being somebody that is doing something wrong preaching the word of salvation my friends preaching the word of hope and faith in a higher power telling them that you know this is this is a beautiful thing it hurts my heart to see that there are grown women grown men who are calling cops on preachers and evangelists then you have men or women going around speeding making noise campaigns all over the city. Not one person is arrested. Not one person is calling the cops. Not one person is reaching out. Yet you have a woman who's raising her voice to let people know that we need Jesus Christ. This is what God commanded his people to do. You need to proclaim it. Proclaim means you speak it. It comes out of you. It doesn't mean only by actions. You can only show somebody so much. You have to show that what you're living is worth going to jail for. It. It's worth dying for. It. It's not worth hurting people because I'm not hurting people. My voice really isn't that loud where I'm going to disturb the people. Now, if people are angry and upset because I'm preaching the word of God, that's a different story. You have people doing so many things. Everywhere I go, I see people advertising things, promoting things. They're doing things. When you preach, when you speak the word of God outside of the church, this is what happens. The devil will find one person to try to block you. But do not stop. Do not stop preaching the word of God. The moment that, went, that man told me, he told me I had to get out. He told me I had to leave. I couldn't be there anymore. I couldn't come and do what I was doing there anymore. And I told him, God bless him. And he got mad. And I told him, God bless him. And I'm still telling God bless you. Because I'm like, you trying to stop the word of God being preached? You're denying God. And the word says if you deny him in front of him, then you, he's going to deny you when it's time for him to when it's time for you to confront him he's gonna say I don't know you and you're gonna be like wait no I, I, I know you he's, God's gonna be like no why did you tell my daughter to shut up why did you tell my daughter to get out with that message why did you tell my daughter Yvonne Alexandra Chamba that she is not welcomed in the park why are you trying so hard to silence a beautiful word why do people want to fight God because you're not fighting me the message that I carry doesn't I didn't invent the message or the gospel of salvation I didn't invent that Jesus Christ died on the cross that his blood is valuable his blood is is what redeems us from sin I didn't invent that message the resurrection of Jesus Christ I'm preaching a word that many people preach they just don't like that I'm preaching it the devil does not like when I preach the word. I preach hope, faith, 
And it's really sad in my heart to see the direction that the country is going in. They don't believe, people are no longer believing in salvation. They believe in manpower. They believe in rumor, slander, and gossip. They believe in artificial intelligence and satellite technology. They believe that is the equivalent of God on the earth. They don't believe in the story of redemption of Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, there's so many things, my God. I was almost, a man almost killed me the other day on the road driving because he was targeting me on the road. And then you have people, he's telling me that I need to get permission to pre, I'm like, I don't have a church. He's like, oh, churches come here and, and they, they get the table there and people who want, I'm like, I didn't go up to nobody. I didn't go up to anybody and I didn't force them to listen to my message. So everything that he's saying is basically he's inventing it. I was not selling. I was not asking for money. I was not there with a bucket or a mug saying, give me some money. I need money. No, no, no. I do not sell the word of God. And I don't do what I do to get rich or famous or to have money. This is, the, this is what people think. And it's unfortunate. I'm not playing games. I don't take Jesus Christ as a joke. I'm afraid to ever tell. If I see somebody on the street praising God or doing what I do, I would never, even if I got fired from a job, I wouldn't tell the person, now that I know the truth about Jesus Christ, I would never tell them to shut up. I would never tell them to get out because I would be more concerned about God holding me accountable for trying to silence the word of God. Because I really am a believer, my friends. Whether people believe me or not, it has nothing to do with it. But when you try to stop somebody from doing what is really right, you're basically saying, we don't need God. We don't need preachers. We don't need a conscience of what is right or wrong by the word of God. Nobody wants to admit this. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 year old men picking on a five foot tall Latina, picking on a woman, calling the cops. Second time that they called the cops on me for preaching the word. I, the first time I wasn't even preaching. Imagine I was preaching the word in the parking lot of Best Buy. And this, this, is, this is what I told in my last video. The first time they called the cops on me, it was in an upper class, more of an upper class neighborhood. This area here is also an upper class neighborhood. And it's a shame that this is the type of things they call the police for. Meanwhile, you have people getting shot. You have people getting raped. You have people committing suicide. You have burglaries and theft happening all over the city. Yet you're calling the cops on me for preaching the word of God. This is beautiful. This is so beautiful. It can't get any more juicier than this, my friends. This is the direction that the country is going in. It makes the country feel good. It makes a lot of people feel good when they see people like me, like people try to pick on me or bully me. The man's like, I'm not targeting you. I'm like, you think? I'm like, do you even know what a targeted individual is? It's not bullying. It means that you're, you're doing this. You're organized stalking me. And the only reason you're telling me to shut up is because you are following orders of a covert system that's happening all over the city. I told them, I'm like, you can deny it all you want, but you can't lie to God. All right, the God that I preach knows what's happening. That's why he's supporting me. That's why I'm not handcuffed, my friends, because God is not going to allow for the enemy to take me out before it's my time. The day that something happens to me, it's probably going to be because I was preaching the word of God. Someone got so enraged and so angry that I was in Satan's territory, proclaiming the word of life, proclaiming the word of forgiveness, proclaiming the word of eternal salvation. And especially, it's, this happened because I'm targeted. Yes, because people are running rampant. Nobody wants to preach the word of God, but people want to persecute individuals. This is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Exactly what I was waiting for. Next time, I really hope that they go ahead and do the whole handcuff thingamajig. Because, it, it, I mean, what are they waiting for? 
They're just waiting for what? For me to stop believing in Christ? For me, they feel disrespected because of Jesus. They're not afraid of disrespecting Jesus Christ. They're afraid of being, they're offended for being, feeling disrespected and convicted by the word of God. That's the problem, my friends. That's the truth. And that is the only truth. And unfortunately, we're living in a society that thinks they can hide all of this from the creator of the heavens and the universe. It, and they don't believe in God, because if you really believe in God, it's only a matter of time that this type of crime is going to be exposed. God will lift up a standard because he needs more men or women who are not afraid to do what's right. Do you really think that if I went and asked for permission to sit on a table to talk about Jesus Christ, oh, those are the rules? No, my friends, there are no rules. There are no rules, my friends. People are breaking the law left and right. And then when it comes to a targeted individual, they expect us to do everything the way they want us to do it and harass us at the same time. It's a very sad time. But hopefully some light will be shed. Um, I had a pretty good interaction with the officer. She said that I'm allowed to be back in the park. That I, I mean, I have, she's told me I have my freedom of speech, that nobody can really stop me. And if I'm at right, she's told me I can call the cops just as well as he called the cops on me. And I told her, I'm like, I've had so many other bad things people do to me. And I'm like, I have not called the cops on them. And it's amazing that because I was preaching hope, love, and faith, the strength of God, this man called the cops on me. I told her, this is the second time somebody has called the cops on me. I'm like, the first time I wasn't even preaching. I had my radio on in my car. And it he told me I was disturbing the quiet park. I'm like, there was no people in the park except for a couple of people. And over the next hour, a whole bunch of people, there was at least 20 people who came. And, and I was there over 50 minutes. On my, because I was, um... I had my phone on for a little bit and nobody called the cops that man came right before I was finishing and it's like oh you need to get out of here and you need to leave because you can't solicit in the park I'm like again soliciting I'm not asking for money I'm not begging for money I'm not trying to force anyone to come to a church because no I'm like I see people come to the park all the time they're playing loud music they're playing all, doing all this obnoxious noise. And nobody's calling, I'm not calling the cops on them. But yet they're calling the cops on me. Glory be to God. This is the country. This is the direction it is. They're trying to kick God out. And they're trying to say that they don't need God. That there is a power that is above God. And that's exactly what they tried showing today. People are more afraid of these individuals, these agents, than they are about God.